Good morning everyone, welcome to the Trade the Bell session with Rich Trading. My name is Tim Gildale and I'll be running through a few interesting opening moves this morning. But first of all, we'll start with our disclaimer. Any advice given within this presentation is general advice and does not consider your objectives, financial situation or needs and you should consider whether it's appropriate to you. Okay, so we'll get started. Um, this morning we've had... Uh, Bit of a move on the open, a very slight move back from the current resistance level. And it looks like the market's feeling quite a bit of resistance at this level. Uh, last time it was here back in January, late January, uh, the market did pull back a bit and it looks like at least today that it's starting to get some selling pressure when it's up to this level again. That level's around the 7130 mark. Anyone's guess what it will do tomorrow, but uh, as of today, it does seem like it is pulling back again. We did have a bit of support just above this 50-day moving average, the red line on the screen. And uh, it looks like over the past, uh, since basically the beginning of 2019, the 50-day moving average has been providing some solid support for the market as it continues its bull run. Okay, we'll jump over to um, Commonwealth Bank this morning, get started. If you have any uh, any questions or any stocks you want me to look at, feel free to send through the stock code and uh, we'll have a look at what's going on with these stocks. Looks like with Commonwealth Bank here, it's had a bit of a, a, uh, a quick rise following reporting season and resistance is right on that 91 level and it looks like support is right on the $90 level so it seems to be trading well within a psychological range exactly what you'd expect with uh, when you're when you're conducting technical analysis on a stock and if we look over the long term at least back to August we can see that the 200 day moving average has been a good support for this stock and the 50-day moving average has seen quite a lot of price action around it as well. With a bit of a pullback, we would expect the stock to meet some resistance at that 90 level again. And um, the next resistance level will probably be looking at 88. Sorry, our next support level, somewhere around the 88 mark. Jump into another one here, CIM. It's had a bit of a bit of a move. So it had a, a major move back in January. And it was initially flagged for a lit short trade. Uh, it would have been shortly after. On the 28th during this actually it would have been just recently it looks like it's a recent one so we've had the market fall below this previous uh, support level where it fell down to on the 23rd of January and it looks like it is slowly pushing through it's got a bit of a, a bit of buying pressure this morning very minimal probably not even relevant um, based on the outlet short trading we expect this to possibly continue down um, as it has pushed through a major support level which is somewhere around this $29 mark, $30 mark back in October 2019. There's been a lot of red on this particular stock even when it pulled up, selling pressure came back in straight away and the stock started to fall again. I can't really see much evidence of having significant buying pressure on this stock just yet. So uh, I would still be quite bearish on this particular stock based on our lit short trading strategy. We'll have a look at Coles and Woolworths next. So Coles seems to have bounced off its resistance level. Fairly new resistance level at that. It's a new all-time high. 
and seems to be slowly coming back. There has been, since the 5th of February, quite a lot of red days. So the stock will open, sometimes higher, but the sellers will come in and take their profits when that has happened. It doesn't look like there has been strong selling pressure except for these two days on the 4th and 5th of February. This just looks like uh, a small movement, maybe not even that significant, but it is pushing it back below a psychological level of $17. So we'll see what happens here. It could be a little bit of a pullback before you start to see it bounce again. But uh, as a breakout trade, if we can find a support level and bounce off it, we would expect it to start to break out again once it bounces back. And similar with Woolworths, really, Woolworths has had a very strong growth run since the beginning of the year. And there's just a slight pullback at the moment, probably insignificant, really. And it looks like it's around a bit of price action around the $43 mark and $43.50. But there is a bit of buying pressure in there so far today. With a strong growth trajectory like this, there could still be quite a bit of buying pressure still in the market, even though it hasn't really been seen after open over the last week or since the beginning of February. It is opening higher on most of these days. We'll have a look at Goodman Group. Had some positive half yearly results come out had a bit of a big jump up and then the sellers came in and then the next day a bit of a jump, a bit of buying pressure and then the sellers came back in and today we're just sitting right around this $16.45 mark which seems to be a bit of a support at the moment for Goodman Group. What we'd be looking for for the, this breakout to continue um, looking for a couple of days with some green on it. There's a lot of red since it's made its big move up. So there is a bit of selling pressure at this level still. Um, but once all the sellers have left, uh, there, there could be a, a series of bias on the market. There has been some strong growth trajectory throughout the whole of 2020 so far. And uh, this is just an exceptional leap up. So we'll see if it can continue at least to maintain price action at this level, will continue its uh, its rise even further. We'll have a look at IAG. So IAG looks like it's about ready to go for the short. Again, it hasn't been at this level since December 2018, around Christmas time. And it's right on what would look like a support and resistance level, right at this level. Back in June 2017, it was a major resistance level. And in September and October 2018, it has been a support level. And then again in January 2019, I was trading close to this level before bouncing back. So right here, this this level will really be what decides what happens with this stock. It's probably around the 670 mark, 670 to 675, somewhere around there. So far, we have seen some support at this level on Friday when the market tried to tried to test this uh, resistance, this support level. And today, we're also looking at a bit of support right now. This is where the market is currently trading. If it does push through, it could be a, a further breakout lower or if the buyers do re-enter the market and there is a bit of buying pressure, then it could be a bit of a support level. It could start bouncing back. We'll see what happens. What we'd be guessing here, if there is a major move on either side, then it might be a large move, possibly similar size to this one back in December 2018.
We'll have a look at Ramsey Healthcare. So these guys are really running through a whole lot of improvements through their business internally, updating their systems and modernising quite rapidly. Um, but they are reaching a resistance level at this 80 mark. And once again, nice psychological resistance level, very important for technical analysis. It has bounced off already, pulled back a little bit, buyers came back in, and it looks like it is starting to see some price action, potentially pulling back a little bit again. Potential for a double top here if the market does I hit it again and pull back. We would expect to see some more support on the 50-day moving average. However, if the market can push through this resistance level, then uh, there has been a lot of sellers entering into it. So it'll be interesting to see how far it can get before it does pull back. It does seem like a very strong resistance line. The stock, once again, like many stocks we're looking at today, it has had a very strong growth trajectory since the beginning of the year, and it seems to have just stabilised a bit around this range. We'll have a look at TWE, Treasury Wine Estates. So this one continues to fall, so the big pullback, market recovered, and then continued to pull back in the coming trading days. It's now trading closer to the $11 mark, and it has been a long time since it has been at this level. Looks like its current trading level is a support and resistance level from back in 2018 and sorry 2016 and 2017 and then it's been well beyond this level for quite a period of time since then. So it's coming back here if we see it pushing through um, 1121 we'd probably be looking at the next support level being at the $10 mark a major support level. Maybe some smaller supports in between, but that $10 psychological level will be very, very um, relevant in, uh, in the price action of TWA over the coming weeks if it does get down there. Got a very high ADX on this one. It's currently at 58. This is a, uh, a, a brilliant lit short by the looks of it. We'll have a look at, last of all, Harvey Norman. Seem to be having some good times coming up to $44.77. They were last at this level back in 2017. Interesting with, uh, with retail, seeing a, a, a bit of strong performance, at least over the short term, in this sector. It's always doom and gloom in the media with Australian retail. But uh, looks like the 200 day moving average was a very strong support for this market. And seeing 477, the resistance level, it's probably a higher resistance level. It could have a bit of a further push up if it does continue its trajectory up to that psychological level at $5. Probably looking at support being somewhere around the $4.60 mark, $4.65 even at this stage. Though with large price movements upwards, it does have a tendency to have a, a quick retraction on the way down as well. Want to keep your eye on. Did you have any stocks that you wanted me to run over or is there any aspect of what we've just seen that you'd like me to go in a bit more detail around?
Where do you guys see the market going? Are you bullish at the moment, bearish, or are you expecting it to go sideways? Here's one, Reese Pharmaceuticals, sent through by Joanne. This looks like there's something more fundamental going on than technical. And this is not a stock that I have looked at, so I don't think I'm going to be much use on this one. It's had a fairly quick rise since late 2019, it has doubled. This would all be fundamental, really. There's a bit of a, a resistance level around for 43 cents, 45 cents, maybe 44. And it has broken through that level with regards to resistance. There's no real way to tell where the resistance would be. Uh, it has gone up to 52 cents in the past. It's broken through that again. Maybe there's another support at 50 cents for a short moment. But with a fundamental move, I'm assuming it's fundamental. Could have a look at my company. The technicals aren't going to tell much. Let's have a look at BHP. So BHP is trading comfortably, just like Rio. Well, comfortably. It seems to be a, pretty much sporadically, just somewhere between the 50-day and 200-day moving averages. So basically hinting that the, the medium term and the longer term market price for BHP is aligned with the current share price. So any change in fundamentals would likely cause a change in the direction of this market. And uh, until that really happens, or until maybe even the price of iron starts to change more significantly, this could continue on for a period of time. We'd be looking at maybe a support level at 37.50 and uh, probably a resistance level somewhere around the 40 mark. And of course the 50 day and 200 day moving average are very, very important uh, resistance and support levels for BHP. If you have a look at Rio, pretty similar story. Same thing, 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average, prices are aligned. And volatility, it's not really that high compared to historically for Rio. And implied volatility, it's okay, but Yeah, it's okay. It's not too high. So whether it would be an iron condor trade, even it's with lower implied volatility, might not be getting the money up, the, the premium up front that you're looking for with a strategy like that. Then we'll have a look at, uh, just have a quick look at Newcrest while we're looking at some of the resources. So we can see Newcrest right here on a very strong support level at around that $28 mark or somewhere close to it, $27.90. We're probably seeing a resistance level other than the moving averages around $31.20. Of course, the 50-day moving average has been a, a fairly relevant support and resistance. It doesn't necessarily bounce off it directly, but it has been trading around it. It's a bit of a pivot point. If the market can push through this support level, then we'd probably see the market start to trade down to the 27 mark and then potentially 26.50 is the next support level after that. Just based on the price action back here in uh, May 2019. Then you're probably looking at 24, but that would be a large move. So it wouldn't be something that would happen immediately. It will take a fair bit of time to get down there. We'll have a look at OEC.
Once again, this would be another fundamental move. Wouldn't really be able to give much insight on this. Seems like it's fairly thinly traded stock as well. Probably not much coming from fundamentals if it's There's not a lot of, uh, of volume going on, not much confirmations, not many confirmations available. Seems to have gotten quite volatile to the resistance level, it's pulled back, it's back in. It's trading slightly above this support. Two days of low volatility around price movements. Could be stabilizing. It seems to have much less price activity than it has had since 29th of January, at least in its, uh, in its immediate past over the past year. But uh, that once again does look like a fundamental move. Wouldn't be able to give much further insight on it than that. Probably another support level right here though. 50 cents. Have a look at Ansel. Got a bit of a golden cross here. 200 day moving average is a strong support level. The 50 day moving average is somewhat strong on the way up. Gaps on the way down, pushes through on the way up. Bit of price action over mid 2019 around that level. Evidence of support and then also evidence of just being a pivot point. Looks like it's gone back to its support mode again. Since the end of 2019, you can see since uh, mid November, mid October, it's been a fairly solid support. A lot of days of green on the way up since the beginning of 2020. Bit of price movement here. So there's a bit of a bit of selling pressure that's coming in at this uh, definitely at the 33 level, and probably at uh, 30. around the 32.50 level. There's a bit of price action. So this is a, a breakout trade. It has had a strong breakout since the beginning of the year. It's been flagged by scanners many times since the beginning of 2020. And it's probably not gonna be flagged again until it goes above this big red candle from the 11th of February. However, does it mean that the upward trajectory is going to stop? It could still continue. It looks like it's just got a bit of resistance around this 32.50 and 33 level. So what we'd be looking for, it's, it seems like with the selling pressure that's there, it could bounce back down towards 50 day moving average. And then you'd expect there to be a bit of buying pressure as there has been early on in the year to perhaps come back up and maybe even break out further. Alternatively, we'd be looking at more consecutive days of price activity around this, uh, this resistance level or this pivot point, slightly above, slightly below, but generally around that level. We'll have a look at CSL. CSL's had a tremendous run. Supply volatility has dropped off. Without looking at it, I assume that must have been from reporting season. And we can see the ADX has continued to increase even further. It's now extraordinarily high at 660, around the 60 mark. It's pretty high for, uh, for CSL if we look at the history of it. It's, uh, it's usually peaks at that 50 mark. 
now it's pushed all the way through to to the 60 level we can see why it's had a strong strong run all the way since say june 2019 it's gone up bounced off the 50-day moving average bounced again bounced again it's had a really strong bounce in the beginning of 2020 and has continued its trajectory upwards and it just continues to to rise further and further it seems like this breakout is still in the process of continuing just got to be aware that there is a $30 gap between the current share price and the 50-day moving average so if it is going to pull back and bounce off that 50-day moving average again especially if it's right around expiry time it could end up going against you but there's no way to determine when that will happen we would be expecting a slight resistance level around this 330 mark it'll be another psychological point maybe even 333 once it pushes through we would expect um, if the price actually continues the way it has been consolidation above that level and then continuing to push forward it is a big a bit of a gap though so just be very wary the 50-day moving average will eventually catch up as is the nature of a moving average however just be careful of that that $30 gap there Were there any other stocks you want me to cover or anything else that you would uh, want a bit more of a discussion around? So it looks like um, all the people that have responded, um, looks like you're feeling that the market is still going quite bullish. We'll see where XJO is right now. It's pulling back slightly. But there's no sign that that's necessarily uh, a massive turnaround. It's still right at all time, right close to all time highs. We do have a bit of economic data coming out this week on Wednesday and Thursday around the wage price index and the unemployment rate, the participation rate and the part-time employment. So it will be interesting to see if those figures can exceed expectations. Anything positive on the wage price index front will be a big plus for consumer confidence in the market. Um, but it has been quite sluggish over the, the past few years. So we're, I'm not really expecting too much to come from that. If there's some surprise data though, you should expect a bit of a move in the market. All right, if that's, uh, that's all the questions we've got, then I will call this session to a halt. And uh, one last thing before we go, if you are interested in conducting or participating in a bit of a trader's survey, some white questions around how you trade, um, how you pick direction and um, what you want your trading to do for you over the long term. Feel free to sign up to this link I'm sending through the, the little message section um, through SurveyMonkey. We, you can have your survey published through the, uh, the ASX, our newsletter, and also published on our website. Uh, basically, what we're looking to do is make up a bit more of a, a community of our traders and um, make a, a bit more of a, um, an environment for people to discuss trading within the reach markets and implied volatility uh, community. So feel free to send through a, um, your responses to the questions and we can get them published on our website on the ASX and through our newsletter for all of our readers as well. And with that, I'll call the session to an end and I hope you have a great week and good luck in the ASX options trading game.